Welcome to a short video on kind of SAS data organization. So if you're anything like me or a typical student, you're going to have multiple tabs of data loaded at once, right? This is where you, you double clicked on something, right? You came over here, you double clicked on 29 because you need to work on this set of data. You hit run. And there's your data, right? You can look at it in the table and figure out what you have. But it automatically imports it to import and then a number. So I've got a bunch of them, right? Import 2, import 3, 4, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> well, that gets to be a pain trying to remember which is which when you want to go and run some analyses or make a graph or whatever. You have to choose the correct data set. And you don't want to have to be clicking back and forth and go, oh, which one was this? Was this import four? Was this import five? So the easiest thing to do is just rename it. So if you click on change, you can come down here. And instead of import two, I'm going to call it something that makes sense. For instance, I'm going to call it 354. And you have to use an underscore. Look what happens if you use the dash. It comes up and it tells you uh, kind of the rules. So the names have to start with either an underscore or a letter. So in this case, the E is fine. And then the remaining characters have to be alphanumeric, meaning letters or numbers, or an underscore. So a dash doesn't work. So you can just do underscore 54. Click Save. Now you can see it's listed here. But here's the trick. Uh, don't forget to run this, because this SAS doesn't actually recognize it until you run it. Now if you run it, now you can see down here the data set has changed to what you changed it to. So now if you want to go and run some analyses, right? So you go to your task utilities, you go to task, and let's say you're just going to make a simple bar chart. And you want to use that data, right? In your drop down menu, oftentimes it's still going to just show the old names that you've worked with. So if you click on this one, it brings up right all of your stuff. And it might be closed like this if you haven't worked on anything. If you click on work, then it'll list all of your your imports and the new names and so hey i want to work with you know this set of data so i'm going to use exercise 310 and i don't have to remember what it was called when sas imported it so it's just a little something to help save you some time and then one other thing um, that could help with certain things is if you go to your code window and hit edit this is how you can add code to anything right so if you you notice that I haven't even run any analysis so it's just here if you want to kind of cheat and let SAS do some of the basics for you it's easier to actually run something simple right so I'm just gonna add this data and I'm just gonna run to get a histogram and the reason why you do this is it just does the basics for you it kind of loads the data and does all of that kind of coding so you click on code and you can see that this is the code that it generated and really this is the part that kind of matters it kind of loads the data for you but if you you know are looking to type something in then you probably know how to do the basics but let's say you're trying to figure out how to do something and the only thing you can find is on the internet showing you how to do it in code and not how to do it in sas studio then just click edit right go to the last line hit return paste in your code, and then all you have to do is make sure that um, everything matches, right? So the code you're going to get online, most likely your data set's going to be wrong, right? So you're going to change this to match um, your data set that you just did, which is 3 underscore 10, right? Then, you know, it probably has the wrong names for variables and things like that, so you would change those. In this case, I've already changed this to match the variables for this data set. And now if we run it, it's going to do the things that we wanted it to do that we couldn't get out of, you know, these menus. And one of those particular things is a stem and leaf plot. All right, so that's just how to enter some code manually and how to rename your data.